At the end of the singularity, we're handed a match against Lev Lehner, or maybe more accurately, a chance to absolutely destroy Lev Lehner, aka Floros. Beating the crap out of him is beyond satisfying, especially after the brutal way he murdered Olga Marie, all while wearing that smug, eyes always shut face, or his slasher smile. The whole time, He's spouting condescending lines about how everything we did was pointless, and how he's going to crush us even though Altero wiped him out in the Septum chapter without a second thought. The best part? During the Solomon Singularity, after everyone was done farming Barbatos for materials, I'm pretty sure players went straight for Floros to make him pay for every single slight. And just for good measure, some players would scream battle cries for everything he did, well, I think it's more for killing Olga, most likely. At least for me. See? I'm telling you, FGO is full of satisfying moments where karmic justice is served to enemies who really had it coming. So let me take you through some of the most satisfying enemy defeats that have left masters cheering. Next up, we can't forget about that fox-faced villain, Koyanskaya the cunning snake who made our lives a living hell at almost every turn. From the prologue, we know just how devious and arrogant this woman could be. After ruthlessly slaughtering countless members of Chaldea and spreading misery through the Lost Belts, Karma finally caught up with her in a brutal way. Qin Shi Huang, in one of the most epic moments ever, took it upon himself to trap her, utterly helpless under his control, torturing her for eternity until he figured out how to seal her for good. And until he finds that solution, she's going to suffer to the point where she won't even dare think of causing chaos again. He finishes it with the coldest line ever. Remember the suffering of the people you've killed until now. A savage moment of justice, and without a doubt, one of the most badass moments for Qin Shi Huang. In my book, this is one of those nightmare moments where the sound of that drill torturing Koyanskaya echoes hauntingly in the background, piercing through the character's dialogue in the chapter. But man, this payback is beyond satisfying. It's the kind of justice that hits harder than even the Tunguska chapter, where her story finally came to an end. Next up, we have Kadok's defeat. Kadok is meant to be seen as a tragic villain, a guy whose lackluster abilities as a magus left him a nobody, only to have his one shot at greatness stolen when he was nearly killed and had to be put on ice. He's supposed to be a mirror image of Fujimaru. Both come from ordinary families, but with one key difference. Kadok has a magus background, while Fujimaru doesn't. Both have a high affinity for ray shifting, Yet Fujimaru was chosen to participate while Kadok wasn't. They even both have female servants who cover one eye with their bangs, except Mash has short hair and Anastasia has long. Both are ordinary magi, but Fujimaru charges in head first, while Kadok is cautious, always overthinking. Their command spells are literally opposite symbols, but the most important contrast. Fujimaru stays focused on the positive while Kadok drowns in negativity, turning him into a bitter jerk. Most people find it hard to sympathize with him because he's constantly acting like an ass toward Fujimaru, driven by jealousy that feels unjustified, especially considering how hard Fujimaru fought just to survive the singularities, something Kadok seems completely oblivious to. Even so, the game tries hard to paint him as someone you're supposed to feel for. So when we finally show Kadok firsthand what it really means to be the last master of humanity, it's beyond satisfying. Sure, we don't get to punch him in the face directly, but there are tons of memes and fan art out there showing Fujimaru bullying Kadok, proving just how many players wish they could knock some sense into him. Honestly, if it weren't for the moments with Anastasia that were well done, many players would have preferred he just died. But thankfully, his return in Traum gave us some solid character development and a well-executed heel-face turn, 
finally redeeming him in the eyes of many players. Continuing with the Cryptors, let's talk about Beryl Gutt's death. Easily one of the most satisfying. As a kid, Beryl begged his mother to teach him magecraft. But not just any magecraft, he wanted the kind tailored for assassination, torture, and murder. Once she ran out of things to teach, he killed her and headed to the city, becoming both a serial killer and a hitman. He's infamous, a criminal who kills for fun, and hated so much he earned the nickname Werewolf from the Clock Tower, a total disgrace to humanity. At first, I didn't really mind his character, especially since he got along well with Kadok. But after the events in Olympus, where he betrayed Wo Dame by stabbing him in the back and indirectly fired Rongominiad straight over our heads, his true colors were clear. He's rotten to the core. Don't forget, he even broke Mash's fingers when she was younger, claiming he hurt her not out of hate, but because he loved her. That level of twisted thinking made him incredibly dangerous. In the end, Beryl makes one last move to attack Mash while she's still worn out from the fight. But because his body is cursed with moss, he's falling apart, slowly dying. Even in his last moments, he tries to express his sick version of love to Mash and sees the protagonist as the final obstacle in his way. After getting thoroughly wrecked, Beryl reverts to his human form bloody and on the verge of death. Stumbling toward Mash, he tells her that he just wants to see her one last time, commenting on how beautiful her eyes are. He collapses to his knees, confessing he loves her from the bottom of his heart. Mash doesn't deny it, but simply says she could never understand what he called love. Beryl gives her one final smile before dying. Lost Belt 6 delivers Beryl's agonizing Rasputin-style death, which, after all the awful things he did and his non-tragic backstory, players couldn't help but appreciate, especially with Pepe's heroic sacrifice, a fitting end for a man so twisted. Ashia Doman is one of the most detestable villains, and his downfall is nothing short of cathartic. After years of manipulating lost belts and causing suffering, Doman finally faces his reckoning in the Heian Kyo chapter. As a twisted Onmyoji from Japan's Heian period, he takes delight in human misery, wielding dark forces and curses, all while mocking the protagonist and humanity at large. God, I really hate this guy. He's unpredictable, always scheming, and you just know he's hiding something sinister. He's the reason Asha and her family suffer so much, but his deeds catch up to him in Heian Kyo. In this chapter, after tormenting the world and even transforming into an alter ego, fusing with divine and vengeful spirits like It's Papalotl and Chernobog, he meets his end. When you finally battle Doman, the fight is intense. He is protected by powerful barriers and devious abilities including the use of command card burns and curses. His fight is designed to be as tricky as his manipulative personality, but the satisfaction comes when you and your servants, along with Kintoki's giant mech, absolutely destroy him in the end. After years of manipulating events from behind the scenes, playing God and corrupting entire realities, his defeat feels like justice. Even though he meets a gruesome fate, his malevolent grin and audacious demeanor remain, making this moment of payback even more satisfying for players. Hit that subscribe button and share the video so I can stay hyped to keep bringing you some A-plus entertainment.